Hey guys, what's up? My name is CJ and today I'm going to tell you guys how to remove copyright strikes from your YouTube account. This is a pretty long video and I'm only going to discuss the process to removing them towards the end. So I highly recommend that you watch the whole video because I'm going to discuss what exactly a copyright strike is and what circumstances you can get rid of them and what the consequences can be because remember I'm not liable if anything happens to you or your account because your account can be terminated and you can be sued I'm not kidding just please pay attention it's gonna be five minutes of your life that will actually help you out so first off what exactly is a copyright strike basically when you upload content that is owned by a company or a other party that's not YouTube or you you have a chance of getting a copyright strike. Basically, they have the choice of doing anything to your video. They can either remove the video, put ads on the video if it's a copyrighted song in the video. They can mute the video if the audio is, belongs to them. Or they can delete the video altogether and give you a copyright strike. Now, we don't really know exactly what causes the copyright strike to come onto your account. It's pretty random. We don't know it yet. And we can't make a conclusion on it, so we're just going to leave it as is. But it can happen. Obviously, you should try to avoid all copyright, but if you're watching this video, it's probably too late and you might be wondering, well, what happens if I have a copyright strike? Well, having one copyright strike will, first off, prevent you from earning any money off your videos, if that's your goal here on YouTube, and it will prevent you from uploading videos over a length of 15 minutes, which is a new feature on YouTube. Also, having any copyright strikes brings you closer to your account being terminated, because once you get three of them, you can be banned. So having two of them, like in this case here, which is on my backup account or my second account, the name is really stupid, that's why I stopped using it. Uh, I had two here, so I quit the account a while ago, but then realized, I later found out exactly how to get rid of them. So just to prove that this works, this is the email examples you'll see later of what the, my email process uh, came from my account here, my, the one I'm using this video on right now. This is my account, and as you can see, I have no copyright strikes right here. I recently got rid of them. I'll tell you guys exactly what I wrote in the forums and exactly what they told me in email because it's a really the, the whole process of getting rid of it is a big misconception, so I'll let you guys know that after. Basically, you, <coughs> sorry about that. You're going to want to know if you actually can get rid of your copyright strike because there are certain cases where people either won't sue you or won't care or they will actually take action against you. This is a perfect example right here. First off, you're going to have your the name of your title, you're going to have your YouTube account name, you can have your video ID, which is appears in the URL, so you can always find your video after. This will be needed for your um, counter notification. And you're going to say who removed the video, which will be the company name right here, and what the date is. The date doesn't really matter. So who removed your video if this is a, per this is a mainstream company? Viacom is a mainstream company which owns the right to the TV station which I uploaded this video, then you should not take any action because they will take action against your account. First off, Viacom is an example. They sued YouTube for a lot of money in the past and have made lots of trouble for YouTube and are constantly going after them for copyright issues. If you do a bit of research on the company, you'll find out what their history is with YouTube and you can see if you should take action or not. In this case, Viacom do not take any action. If you're having trouble determining whether or not you should take action or not, send me a message with the exact copy and paste this whole thing and send it to me and I will let you guys know exactly what to do. In the second case, this is actually a perfect example, you'll have the exact same stuff but in here you will have a YouTube channel. Just type it on youtube.com slash and you'll have a channel name here. In most cases, remember this is most cases and I'm not liable if anything happens, just please understand all this first. Vineyaman shows this guy is a guy who dresses up as a slinky and dances around. He does not own the rights to America's Got Talent, which is owned by ABC or NBC, I'm not too sure. He appeared on the show at one point in time, but did not have the rights to actually upload them. So this is something called a false DCMA report, or false copyright. DCMA is the counter notification. If I say claim or strike, they mean the exact same thing in this video. This guy filed a, filed a false copyright claim against me because he did not... Uh, appreciate the videos were on YouTube, but he did not have the right to take them off. He might have not liked that I was uploading these videos, but he doesn't have the right. So in this case, filing a false uh, counter notification is, is the right choice to do. You're not doing anything wrong. In any other case, send me a message and I'll let you guys know if you should actually do anything or not. As you can see here, I have gotten rid of mine in the past. I'll let you guys know what my circumstance is and we'll go there. So go here and then click on Help Center. It'll be above your copyright strikes. Then you're gonna, you should read all, guys, read all this. I'm just gonna go through it because I don't want this video to be too long. Please read all this, it'll help you guys out. You're gonna go to how do I file a DCMA counter notification, not international counter notification, DCMA. Click on submissions. Then click on the here. Okay, I have read the copyright tips. What next? 
yes, I know which videos were removed. You're going to click on yes. My bad, you're going to click on no up here. All right, sorry about that. You're going to click any portion of this claim it's material used at all in your video, click no. Then you're going to click proceed to the counter notification form, and it'll say not right now. Click on proceed, the first link. Remember, always read all this stuff. Click proceed to the form at the bottom. All right, now you're going to be at the copyright counter notification form. Basically, in this form, you're going to fill out all your information your YouTube username, I don't care if you put real or fake information, it's up to you guys. I've, I'm not going to let you guys know what I did. You put the video URL, which is obtained by going back to the copyright strike, and it's going to have that link, like I told you, it's going to say the video ID, and you're going to go to, just go to another YouTube video, and I'll show you guys how to do it, because this is a process that people get kind of confused on. Here, go to a YouTube video, and you're going to have the ID up here. Just remove that ID and replace it with what you have, and then you can input that into the uh, form. So fill out all this. Right here, you're going to type, copy this, copy that. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, and these two boxes here are what counts. You're not going to, you need, don't need to provide any proof in this situation. This is not the place you provide proof. You're just going to have to convince YouTube that a mistake was made. Either that, if you want to be an asshole, you can say, yes, I own the copyright. And you can be forceful and be very aggressive towards them. Or you can just say there is no, just really has to be one to two sentences. Do not use up the 300. Using up the 300 shows you that you don't know what you're talking about and you just want to get out as many words as possible. And hopefully one of those words will... Uh, convince them. No, just one sentence saying there. None of my footage contained uh, copyright material from da da whatever company. Same thing down here. You can copy and paste them. It's fine. First name, last name, and then submit. Remember, your email address has to be the exact one associated with your account. After you submit this, you will wait a couple days and you will receive a email from YouTube, either saying that your form went through or did not go through. Let's see here. Um, here you go. Hi there. This is from the YouTube support. Hi there. Thank you for your counter notification. It has been forwarded to the party and that sent the takedown notification. If we receive no response, here's where the catch is. This is, this is not the catch. This is where determining whether or not you can get rid of your copyright strike happens or not. If we receive no response, your material will be restored between 10 to 14 business days from today. Sincerely, the YouTube team. Right there, it's telling you that if they don't reply, which most companies, if they don't care, won't reply, you they'll just take it off, which is the biggest misconception because people think, oh God, they're going to come after me and sue me right away. And I have to, pre they think they have to present proof that they own it. That was the old terms. They've changed it. And I didn't know this from the time that I had this account. So basically they just don't have to reply. If it's a company like Viacom, they will reply. They will be on your ass with a sledgehammer. Don't do it. Uh, what I said, okay, for me, I uploaded a trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops before the game was released, and they thought it was hacked footage. Now, obviously, there was a mistake made because they don't care if I upload the trailer. I'm not going to get into content ID matches. If people really want to like find out why videos get taken down so fast or videos get muted with music, let me know. I'll explain it all in another video, but not now. That's the... Uh this is what I said, okay, because I said the video does not contain any hacked, leaked, or copyrighted footage from Call of Duty Black Ops as claimed by Activision. Simple as that. You don't need anything more than that. That was my whole thing. And then you wait, and if they don't reply, hi there. In accordance to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, we've, complete, we've completed processing your counter notification regarding your video. There's my video ID. This content has been restored to your account and will not be penalized. Okay, let's open the link to prove to you guys that the video is back. Just to prove that at one point in time, this was not, um, this was not, because I don't have any proof that I had a copyright strike. I should have taken pictures, but it's my bad. So give the video a while to load. There we go. Video is back up. That bit is new. And pretty much that's it. So just getting past that first, getting YouTube to send the message. Getting them to send it, just convincing them in that one box down there that they should send your notification to the party that filed the claim this is all it takes. You don't need proof. You just have to know that you know what you're talking about. So listening to those first steps were important because first off, you can get in a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing and it's you go up against a company that actually wants a piece of you. 
Copyright content ID matches, normally, I'll just explain it really briefly. In the case of mine, uh, I had copy, um, Call of Duty uh, footage. That was my title, all right, uh, before I changed it recently. And people are uploading hacked gameplay, which they didn't want. They didn't mind if there's a trailer. But they just went through a very quick scan, because there's not one person there watching every video. So if there's some keywords or audio is just matches something they have, they'll automatically take it off. So obviously there is room for problems here. And if you know you have a problem, and if you have any questions, let me know, guys. It's, it's very serious. I'm, it's been about a year that I've been researching copyright on YouTube, so I pretty much know the, a lot about it, and hopefully can answer all your questions. <clears throat> so thank you very much for listening. If this helps you out in any way, uh, give this video a thumbs up. Really, ratings don't matter, but it helps spread the video around if it, the more thumbs up it gets, so that's great to help other people out. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the description, and or send me a message if it's private, and if you want to know if you should take action or not, Copy and paste the copyright claims. I'll show you what to do. Oops. You just go to, oh yeah, if you don't know how to check, go to account, then you'll be in here. Click on manage account. I don't know why it's not loading. All right, it's not in the mood to load, so let's refresh. There we go. Copy and paste from here to here, the whole thing. You're not giving me any information away, and I'll let you guys know what exactly you should do. Just doing a bit of information, a bit of research on this. You'll like if you research Vinayam and shows, you'll find that the guy just dresses up as a slinky and dances around. You think he really owns copyright? You think he owns anything besides the slinky outfit? Nah, he doesn't. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if this helped you. Give this video a thumbs up because that will help spread this video around. And if you have any questions, do not feel um, shy to ask. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Stop recording. Boom.